you would join us. Nobody does Star Wars like the power of the Force from Kenner. Hey Star Wars fans, welcome to another episode of Power of the Force Friday. While we're in the midst of the Cantina HasLab, which I would like to speak more of at some point, I just haven't got around to putting together a video. Um, but I thought let's let's do a little couple of couple of Cantina characters that I've that have slipped by over the last year or two, however long I've been doing Power of the Force Friday for. Um, I thought we'd just slot them in here, slot them into uh, into this this Cantina month. Now, for those going to ask, I haven't backed the Cantina yet. Not yet available through the fan channel that usually provides them for us here in Australia. So hoping by the end of the week, we can have that available. And hopefully in the next few weeks, I can uh, put down a deposit for that bad boy. Because let's be honest, this, uh, this old cardboard thing back there, it's a little bit dated. Speaking of dated, we have Garandon here from The Power of the Force. This is the newest version of this figure I have. It was the first. Um, and yeah, I've never replaced him. There was one that came out, I think it was 2004 or 2006. I can't remember whether it was original trilogy collection or um, saga collection. I'm just completely blanking. It's starting to get back in years now. We're talking 18 and 20 years, which is nuts. So Garandon needs an update in TVC would be incredible and then you can go and retool and you can do the uh the the taxi guy from mandalorian the very first episode with the flute that'd be cool too so yeah you've got a couple of options there so here he is the cubaz the imperial spy long snoot one of his older older nicknames Again, not sure whether the blaster I have him holding is accurate to the figure. I didn't check. Um, this is just one he's been holding for a long time. And uh, to be honest, I've kind of... He was in my sort of main display. And um, I'm trying to hunt down that sort of... Sort of more modern... <laughs> more modern version. Although there was far less time between this one and that one. Than there is that one and now. <laughs> which... Is, in, is is insane, but I would like to get that one at some point. Um, just in case, you know, Hasbro don't really have have this one on the radar, um, which I think it'd be silly not to, given he's pretty prominent. Pretty prominent. He has a speaking role. He is uh, pretty much the key to the Sand Troopers being able to track down Luke, Ben, the droids, to Docking Bay 95. You just sort of see he's got his little communicator in his hand. That is not removable. That is sculpted in there. And I don't think I've ever tried to tried to take this robe off. It's kind of fitted over the top of the figure. I assume if I probably heat up the head and pop that off, um, you could probably remove that. So, but underneath it looks like it's just a pretty sort of standard, um, you know, ju just suit really. Not indifferent to what sort of an imperial soldier might wear. Um, yeah, nothing super special going on, but it is the, uh, the hood and the cloak that keeps him raveled in mystery in the, in the, in the Badlands, in the back streets of Moss Eisley. Disgusting hive of scum and villainy. Basically Tatooine's own sort of dodgy truck stop, really. <laughs> But he's, he looks good. He still holds up for me. You know, he's, he's, he's been a good figure for a very long time. He's uh, held the fort. He's done his job. He does sort of just sort of skulk around the back with the sand troopers. So, yeah, definitely due for an update on this guy. Now, from memory, the, the, the more modern version, the Saga Collection or Original Trilogy Collection one, whichever it was, um, it actually got a bit more of an, you know, an under-costume under outfit and soft goods sort of robe instead, so it allowed a little bit more sort of fleshing out detail-wise on, on, the, on the figure itself and then just with the soft goods. It's just allowed that little bit more freedom of movement if you wanted to have him, you know, walking. There's this guy, you know, he's kind of... You can get him doing some mean fly kicks, let's be honest. A 
But yeah, I'd love to hear your thoughts about this guy. A potential new version. The Cantina, the HasLab that's coming out. Definitely be getting the deluxe one, particularly if we've got that option here in Australia. Um, I'm hoping we get both options because, you know, I would love, you know, that's almost in par on par with the sail barge for an environment playset that wants to be populated en masse by all the figures. And I think the only sort of figure I'm really missing from the Cantina, and it's not even official, it's, um, well, it's that blue Snaggletooth from 2003. Um, that'd be a cool figure to add in there at some point. You know, that might be a cool addition for something else. Blue Snaggletooth. You know, just a nice little, nice little nod to that old Sears playset from, from the 70s. That'd be cool. Um, but otherwise, my cantina is pretty well populated. Looking forward to a new updated Wooha. Hopefully neighbouring Leeds. The Tonica Sisters, which I've, you know, I've, criticized those two characters before for not being ones that should be made to hang on pegs but in this playset scenario perfect absolutely perfect um don't need them they were the, they just wouldn't sell at retail let's be honest and probably they'd be sitting around clogging pegs for a long time but in this haslab playset anyway i'm getting off track i want to talk more about this haslab in the days to come i might put something out over the weekend just a little discussion. We'll see. Um, but yeah, I do have a lot of thoughts. I'm excited about it. We'll keep you posted. But yeah, we'll see you next week for another episode of Power of the Force Fridays. Hope you've enjoyed. Hope you've enjoyed Long Snoot. We'll see you again soon. May the force be with you always.